Welcome to the channel, everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 2009 Subaru Forester 2.5 single overhead cam non-turbo. How's it held up over the years? Well, we got good points and bad points, and we'll review them. So here we go. As we take our first walk around, you can see the body's still in pretty good shape. It does have the factory fog lights, which is really good. On this side, we have some nice panels that aren't really uh, rusted out or anything for a Northeast car. This is actually in pretty good shape. And even in the back here, we have a nice, um, looking back in, uh, things here look pretty good. We don't have anything hanging down. We have the fake dual exhaust. Of course, they split that backer by the axle to make it uh, look pretty cool, I think. That's about all that is. Now, this one here is an all-wheel drive. It's something called symmetrical all-wheel drive. This comes standards with all Superus back in the day. And, of course, we got the Subaru Forester. And there's one of the other nice logos there. We have one. Of course, this thing came out of Charleston, West Virginia. I don't know if that was where it was bought at the dealer when it was new one time or if it was used. And we do have a little rear wiper here, which uh, still works uh, right now. And up at the top here, you have a little squirter that actually blows the fluid down there when you want to use that wiper. And we have the locking gas door here. You pull the handle on the inside, and this thing goes, boop, opens up and gets into your fuel. These days, you got to have it with the price of fuel, if you know what I mean. The wheels on this are standard 225, 55, 17 inch wheels. And you can see here, we got a little bit of tread left. Up in the wheel wells here, we don't have any rust or anything. We have plenty of clearance here. A lot of guys put bigger tires on there, but I've left this thing pretty much stocked because I really like how it rides and feels, especially handling on the road. And on the bottom here, we do have the fake uh, little plastic covers here that kind of protect it uh, from the rust and the salt and the rock the chips and all that. But you see, this is actually in pretty good shape. And as we open up here, you can see the rocker panels. Uh, really impressed on just how well it's held up over the years. Really pretty clean for the ice and snow and salt that we have up here in the wintertime. So to give these things a nice bath in the wintertime, they actually don't rust out very much. So it's, that's the key to keep them nice and clean, keep the salt off of them in the wintertime. And we have a power mirror on the passenger side. And of course, we got the fancy Super Lou logo on the front, making it look pretty good. And you can see the fog lights on the front here. I did replace these lights. I wanted to make them look a little bit better. So that actually just makes the vehicle stand out, especially coming down the road at you. It looks pretty good. And the headlights, well, they're plastic. They kind of fade, so you got to kind of keep them clean. Try to keep them from getting yellow and everything. That's the only downside. But what vehicle this day has come with actually glass? Everything is plastic, if you know what I mean. And we've got a nice power working mirror on the driver's side. I do like the handles here. They are actually some kind of chrome. They're not plastic. We got four of those. Those came with the uh, vehicle from the factory just like that. And we have a little bit of fake chrome around the back uh, tail light here, which actually makes it stand out a little bit. Now, if you want to get in the trunk one of these, the first thing you do, you start put your, you put your hand down here and you start looking for a handle. But really, what you got to do, there's a little button right there. And you push it right about there, and this will let you uh, get your uh, trunk open like that. So if I push it back down, you hear it click. Hear that? That's how you actually open it up. A lot of guys uh, can't get in there when their battery's dead. So that's something you got to kind of keep in mind. And on the inside here, well, we got a lot of room back here. There's some of my parts that we'll talk about later that I actually had to fix up this vehicle with. And on the bottom here, we do have this guy here that came with it. This is one of these covers that you put up here and you can pull back to kind of keep things uh, from view. And on the bottom here, we have this mat. And under here, we have a pretty decent little place here where we can actually get into our spare. And it's all there. And as we take this cover out here, it's a pretty big cover. You lift it up like that. You take this out and lift up on it. And once you do that, we get this out of the way. Then you're exposed to this here. Kind of got a lot of cubby holes and everything. And you say, what's that? What's this do? Well, you pick this up again. And there's our spare tire. Kind of sit in there nicely. I kind of cleaned it up the best I could for now. A little, we've got a little bit of rust there, but it's all there. We've got that big old tow hook that you can put on the bumper in case you drive it into the ditch. Over here, we have a little tool for the uh, jack handle and all that. So it's kind of been figured out. It's kind of uh, organized well. And it's... Uh, in here to a point where it won't rattle around or anything so that really makes it nice you just gotta take it if you gotta get into the spare <laughs> you gotta take all this stuff out so good idea not to pile a lot of stuff back in here if you think you might need to change your uh, flat tire and over here we have another little piece here to kind of covers that up you can put more stuff in there if you want and same thing over here and actually they got this design when you put this piece on here it actually rides on this and keeps this down on both sides so the engineering here is quite interesting 
And as we go from the spare tire, we'll take a look at the headliner. It's in really good shape. Got some stains there. I just haven't cleaned those off yet. We've got that massive sunroof that we'll look at in a second. And here is my jump pack. I kind of carry that with me all the time. You never know when you need to help a friend along the highway, right? And simply just gently push down on like that. And boom, the thing is shut and secure. Now, as I was just saying earlier, we do have a tow hook. You pop this cover off, you screw that thing in, and you can put a hook on it, and you can pull this vehicle out of a ditch. We've got one on the back there. And we got one on the front, and actually I had to look around for it. I thought that was that there, but that's just a blemish. Someone kind of backed into it. The actual tow hook is right there. If you look closely, see that hole there? That's where that hook screws in. So you can get yourself out of a ditch or a, an issue, or if you get it hung up somewhere, it's kind of nice to have that because a lot of times when you put hooks underneath the vehicle, it rips off the plastic. It gets to be a mess. All right, let's take a nice look underneath. We got that uh, split exhaust. It comes right about there and just goes straight up to the front and over here. It is pretty quiet, though. I kind of like that. Not much rust under here. No holes. That's the main thing. And rust we can deal with. We can always take care of that and all the way up to the front. Nothing's rotted out. Uh, you know, the suspension on it is in pretty good shape. Doesn't need any shocks or anything. And you can see over there, we've got some pretty good uh, shiny rotors. So the brakes are in pretty good shape. They stop very good. And there's that little tiny rear end kind of working that symmetrical all-wheel drive system. And as for the exhaust, well, if I shake it, it doesn't rattle. It's pretty solid. All right, so let's go inside and take a look. I think I've covered about everything outside that you want to know right now. We get in this thing here. We know One thing you notice is the quality of the interior. This thing is held up very nicely. I mean, there's no tears in the seat. It's almost got this futuristic uh, look here, kind of a round uh, Starship Enterprise looking uh, look on the front here. The seats are in good shape. I'm not sure what kind of material it is, but the seat design here, got these little ridges, you can hear this. Kind of kind of tough, but it is still comfortable seats. As we look at the side panels on the inside, no tears or anything. We go all the way to the back there. You can see we've got a nice headrest. And uh, there is the rest of the headliner back there. It's like, like I said, it's a little dirty, but we'll clean that up. We've got a light here. We've got a light back there that's off right now. And also we have this guy here. We have a light there, light there. We can manually turn on and off. Even the passenger side, if you got someone that's nice to look at and they want, might want to maintain themselves, they got a mirror. Even on this side, driver's got a mirror and we got a nice rear view mirror there. Hello, hello, Nathan. And it looks like for the most part, the dash is in good shape, no cracks. Whoever had it, you know, took care of it. That's the main thing. You just want to kind of take care of these older vehicles. They last forever. Stereo system, we got a CD player. We got a uh, aux, and the aux plug for this, if you have a phone with uh, music you want to listen to, I got one of these guys here, kind of plug in the phone. And the aux port is actually down there. It's uh, kind of sitting there. And there we got another uh, little cigarette lighter uh, adapter. We got a cubby hole here. We got a cubby hole here. We got a little place to put some change or whatever. I put my drink here most of the time. And as we put this armrest back down, it's down. But one thing you notice, this thing actually slides forward. So if you're, you know, long armed or anything, kind of nice to put your arm there. And if you want to get back in there, you know, you just kind of put that there and lift it up like that. So it's been engineered design for most people to, you know, to get make it easy access to reach things and to put things in here it's not really cluttered it's not really it doesn't feel tight or anything we also have a cigarette lighter here a little a place you can plug in your radar detector or something that's what i got in there and this actually is a magnet for the cell phone here it's got a magnet in the back of it i actually put it there now if we look up here if i turn the key on and as we turn the key on, we'll turn the key on here and we'll see what lights up here. And we'll probably have a beep and you can see the dash there lights up fairly nicely. And up here we have some instruments. If you can kind of see that, it shows you your gas mileage, has a time and all that. If we go back down here where the speedometer is, you can uh, do trip A, trip B. You can reset it and do all that stuff. And so far, I've got almost 3,000 or so miles on this on both trips. So you know, it's it's pretty good, uh, nice little system here set up. We got the little sport logo there. You go down here if you want to get a sport logo. You put it down in drive, and you move the shifter left or you move it right, and depending on what that says there, you just kind of control it down here. And as the car is running, you can see there we got the little sport logo kind of sitting right there, the little light shining. And if I go down here and hit it to the left one time, and you can see that goes off. And if I hit it again, drop it down, go down, go down. It goes down to another gear. There's drive. Kind of weird how, there we go, two, and you shift down, there's one, 
I shift it up two, and you go to three like that. It's it's really kind of takes a while to get used to. It. Basically, what I'm doing is going one, two, and when you go to two, you go right with a handle, and it's back and drive. Kind of, you know, kind of interesting. Now, in this model, of course, just about all Subaru models, they are made to be out in the weather. We have all kind of wiper options here. We have high, low, intermittent, and we also have the rear wiper, which is right here. On this side, we have our lights, and on the inside, right about here, these are actually the fog lights. You turn them off and you turn them on. That's how that works there. Over here we have our basic mirror set up for the power mirrors. We got the power mirror on that side, which actually uh, kind of works a little slow, but it, uh, you can see it working there. As you can kind of see me there, hello everyone. And on this side, same thing, kind of nice to have that. One thing I really like about this vehicle, it's got all power windows. When I'm cruising down the highway, I don't have to reach over and crank anything, I just do that. Go over here and hit the other side. And put a little fresh air in the back there and it kind of swirls around in this old Subaru and keeps me nice and cool over here on those non-humid hot days and one other thing guys this video is going to be quite long so I hope you don't mind maybe a 20 minute video today because you're probably laying in bed tonight it's cold outside you got nothing better to do and you want to work on your Subaru and you just maybe this video popped up in your algorithm that's what I'm trying to say but you can see right here we don't really have a tilt wheel we have something called a telescoping wheel if you push this button right about here it lets the whole wheel kind of go up and down so i'll take my knee and kind of hold it up there and i pull up on this handle like that and it kind of locks it in which is kind of nice now it's kind of funny you have all these power options but when i get out here check this out we have a manual seat we just slide it back and forth we got the little tilt here and we got this other tilt here that really just kind of pushes it all the way back so i'm not sure how far this one this one goes so far this one makes it go all the way back so it's kind of weird we have all this power options but we have a manual seat which i'm not really complaining and just like the other side the rocker panels in really good shape you can see we've got our door stickers there you can read all the info that you need and they doors on this thing really shut really nice you just barely just barely push them and they lock pretty good there i mean they, they don't do anything like some of my other vehicles they rattle when you shut the door but man these doors shut really good in the subaru and as we look on the top here we have a pretty big sunroof i'm not really big about sunroofs because you can get into all kind of problems you get into hail storms overnight or you know you park somewhere some kid throws a rock and it'll just shatter on the inside here to open this sunroof up you kind of get to get down here like this you got this button here and as you hit the button this will come back like this it'll actually pull this cover but we'll let it do it there so we'll push this back a little bit like that there it goes all the way back so it goes about uh, a little over halfway then you hit it again and it goes all the way back it even lets the people in the back seat get a little bit of sun if you have a pale friend and uh so far i don't have any leaks and i'm kind of surprised uh no issues with this sunroof so far as we put it all the way back in you kind of kind of help it there and you hit it one more time and then boom it's in so pretty nice and also we got a little cubby hole here you can put your uh door garage opener there in and let's see what else do we have and i think that's about it here we do have a handle here you can uh, have your friend hold on if he doesn't trust your driving you actually got one on this side which is kind of weird i've never even really held on to that but if you're going to go off-roading or something put big tires on kind of nice to hold that or if you're just old like me and you want to hold on to something <laughs> just hold on to that and yes the air conditioner works we'll turn the ac on there and we'll get it on ac and we'll hit the restart button there works pretty good uh pretty cold in here but this year for some reason it's been so humid it's really uh, been a necessary item to have and over here if we look at the uh glove box you open that glove box look how nice and slow it comes down it doesn't just go bam fall on the floor like a lot of vehicles got lots of room in here and we got some writing in there it says attention i don't know what language that is well we know what language it is we just i just can't read it but you uh, push it up it locks really nice there and you got a keyhole here to lock uh, up some of your uh, fancy things your possessions if you want to keep them from uh, being uh, misplaced or taken and we got the emergency brake handle right here and believe it or not it actually does work as you can see up there the brake light is on well that's the emergency brake will roll it down there and there it goes off so it's kind of nice to see that working so a lot of vehicles and in some states if your uh, e-brake is not working you will not get an inspection sticker so that is nice and have now on this key here i do have a key fob it does need the battery replaced i need to get the battery replaced in it and everything but when i first got it, it did work which is nice i can lock all the doors and walk away and not worry about anything now as for the mirror here we do have a compass button here but for some reason that has never worked and i actually thought about maybe trying to get this thing fixed 
but you can see it doesn't work at night when the light comes in something happens and it makes it not as bright i've never really understood how these work but uh, i probably did it one time just forgotten i'd like to have that work and that'd be pretty cool but i do have the temperature down here the outside temperature i don't think you can see that it does say 70 degrees and all that so uh yeah the mirrors you know a lot of these do go bad and you got to replace them you can get them on ebay sometimes fairly cheap all right let's get out there and take a look at that engine the handle is right about there you kind of pull up and also while we're here we do have this little button here you push you can turn the all-wheel drive system uh uh, I guess it's anti-skid or whatever off. I don't have a manual, but that does something there. So, you know, there's a lot of whistles of mail. So let's go out here and take a look at this engine and listen to it. Like I said, I, um, I did some work to it. I did a lot of uh, overhaul it. I had to overhaul the engine twice, two times. The first time when I got it, it had an engine knock, pulled it apart, put a crank, new bearings in it, well, and an oil pump. And when I got the oil pump in, well, the, apparently the oil pump was defective. It destroyed the bearings and it started knocking again. Before it threw a rod, or would throw a rod, I went ahead and tore it back apart because I did not want to have the block destroyed. Second time, I got a, a nitrate hard crank, king bearings, put it all back together, and now, man, it runs great. So, uh, what do they say? Second time's a charm? Well, third time's a charm? Well, second time was a charm for me. All right, so there's a look at the engine. As you can hear it running pretty good we got the old air conditioner there running away and you got we got you know not not the biggest battery in the world a 720 cranking amp battery but these engines aren't all that big it doesn't take a lot of power to crank these things over we got our coil sitting there a lot of them sit up here on the top they bolt straight down this one's a little harder to get to and work with it bolts on the back of the implantum here with four bolts you got two wires on this side for spark plugs and you got two on this side now as we just kind of stand here and I kind of listen to it it sounds really good if you're on the open highway and uh, you have no problem getting up to speed cruising this thing at sometimes I'll get about 28 miles to the gallon but around city mixed highway driving probably around realistically 23 and a half to 24 miles per gallon which is still is not all that bad for today so over here we have our power steering we have our abs system right here our unit here we have our uh, cap going to the radiator which i like a lot of vehicles don't even have these anymore they have a container where that you have to pour the fluid in we have our windshield washer here put our oil in here and our dipstick and also a transmission fluid over there i believe that's transmission one size transmission one is differential and down on the bottom, see that little plug there? That is for your differential. And there's the axle sticking out on one side. Once you get this and plenum off and get some stuff off here, it's actually a fairly simple engine to work on. And as we look at the tag here, you can see this is a California Missions. You know, you got to have that on there. So you got to be careful if you want to interchange some of these engines with California Missions. This pipe here going down, this EGR tube, that counts as kind of like California emissions, all that. It's a really just a science. You gotta have a super book about this thick with a thousand pages to understand all these engines. They kind of match with each other and parts interchangeable and all that. But uh, other than that, you know, it's not too bad once you uh, get used to it. Reading some books and going through some online videos on YouTube, you kind of get a good feeling how these things work. And you almost get to the confidence part where you can say, hey, to yourself, I can rebuild one of these. And that's what i did all right since we're about ready to close this hood let's go under the front here and take a look at it real quick and as you can see we really don't have any oil leaks or anything we're in pretty good shape there got this big massive converter here we got one on this side one on this side then everything just kind of comes out in one pipe there and goes back all the way to the back and to the split exhaust and you can see the front end here it's pretty good shape i do have some new in sway bar end leaks i have some videos online things i've done to this so you might want to check out my playlist and you can see the polyurethane red one right there it really made a difference when i put this on it doesn't sway down the highway anymore although it didn't do it all bad all that bad but i just wanted to keep the thing in really good shape all right let's take her down the highway and see how she rides oh before we take it down the highway let me just show you the back real quick i almost cheated you guys out of the back seat here we have a nice armrest that uh, comes up and goes down here these seats do come all the way forward you push this button right here and it will lay all the way down in the back here we have uh pretty much nothing uh we don't even have a cup holder back here which i thought was kind of weird as you can see but you're saying oh, well oh, well well no think again check this out guys i'm excited oh yeah we got cup holders right there yeah and not only that instead of someone walking that way trying to scoot over there oh this is in a way well you just 
let's push this thing back up out of the way and so that's how that works so it's kind of nice here we got the seat belt here we got five places to put somebody with seat belts and all that and they're actually designed where they should stay right where they should when you put them on especially around your neck and also there's door lock and handles and all that we got some places back here you can put some things on the passenger side driver's side doesn't have anything so you know they don't want to spend the eight dollars i guess to put a pouch on that side i don't know and also we got a cubby hole on this side we can put something in on the back doors here so if you've got some passengers with you they have a little bit of uh, some areas back here to put stuff so let's go ahead and take this down the highway we'll get in it here we'll get our seat belt on i'll tell you one thing about this supero this seat belt light will beep forever you got to put your seat belt on so that's what i'm going to do why because i want to live to make another video for you guys all right so away we go we'll drop it down and drive and there we are and it's uh kind of a nice uh, grip to the handle there you kind of see that it's kind of like a pistol grip which is uh, kind of nice we're going to make sure we're in drive because if i hit it one way it goes to sport I'm not sure what sport does maybe that's something with ice and snow i'm not sure but we'll just leave it in drive for now here we go there's first gear there's second gear and there's third of course we're not and we got to get out on the highway to get some highway speed and everything but uh it does handle fairly nice the brakes i could just barely put my foot on it and it'll stop on a dime it, the brake pads and rotors are fairly cheap on these so that is really nice you don't have to spend a lot of money to maintain your car to keep it up for safety and everything so that's what you want to do you want to keep everything nice and safe especially in the winter months because a lot of us don't want to be working in the winter months when it's snowing on our vehicles so do all this stuff in the warm months and it'll get you through the winter months all right let's get on the highway here there's first There's second. There's third. There's fourth. And there's overdrive, and we're at 55 miles an hour, just about. Yeah. Good looking running little vehicle. Handles fairly nicely. I got the windows down. I'll tell you what, I'll put the windows up. Maybe I won't be yelling as much. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, now you hear a little bit of a humming noise. That is a wheel bearing that I've got to replace in the back. I've got it. I'm actually do that today. But the steering is really tight in this thing. I like it. It's not. I mean, it's not terribly tight. It doesn't wobble over the road or anything. It doesn't shake. For a car from 2009, this is one of the better cars that ever came out that year. So, uh, you know, we're cruising down the highway. We're going to turn our lights on there. You can see we've got a little light symbol coming on. The other light symbol on the right, that's for your, actually on the left. You see that? Fog lights are off. Fog lights are on. Fog lights are off. Fog lights are on. Wax on, wax off, and all that. And there is our indicator that we just have some headlights on. Now, I'll just turn the headlights clear off. Everything goes off. So, it takes a while to kind of uh, get used to everything. The radio there, we'll turn that on. You can see... Uh, how that works it's a uh, fairly bright at night and everything you can control the dimness over here by this knob as i continue to drive here and you can see we can kind of change that which is uh easy to do and uh we got a satellite option that we never did uh find in this car so i don't think it ever came with it now they do that they did have a touch screen in some years i don't know if it's interchangeable i thought about buying a touch screen with a nav system but uh, for now, I don't want to mess up the display here. It's nice, and, uh, you know, we don't have any holes, gaps, or anything. I really like how that looks. So I'm going to keep it there for now. I have no problem with it. All right, we're going to slow down a little bit, and we'll go down to about 40. Now, we're going uphill. We're going to kick her down. And there she goes. Let's see how much power she's got up this hill. Hey, not right. No problem. Hear that engine out there? Oh, yeah, there we go. 50 miles an hour. This is a pretty big, great hill. You can't complain for a little four-cylinder 2.5 single overhead non-turbo cam. Now, some of the twin, twin turbos and some of the double overhead cams, I just don't, you know, don't want to work on one of those. It just looks too complicated. It can probably be worked on, but, boy, I tell you what, by the time you're done, you're probably going to have nothing but white and gray hair. Now, you can see we're cruising right along here. Now, we're going downhill, and it does have engine brake if you let up on the gas pedal it does slow down a little bit but i'm going to, have to put the foot on the brake here we're going a little too fast <laughs> but it's a fun little vehicle to drive i can't wait to drive this winter i'm actually doing another video for you guys just to tell you how well i think it drove in the snow and all that i'm interested to get out in that all-wheel symmetrical drive and see just what that's all about so as i'm driving along here i see this poor little creature oh no he's a turtle he's gonna get run over i gotta get him out of the road real quick oh no we gotta help nature we gotta help nature let me get out here and get him hey guy 
I don't know where you're going, but you're going that direction, so we'll get you across the road. I won't charge you a toll. The state might, but we'll get you out of the way. Yeah. You gotta help nature, you know? All right, now you go down there. You go up in there, and you have a great weekend. It's a three-day weekend. Bye. All right, now we're kind of on one of these back roads. Kind of bumpy, not terribly bumpy, but, you know, there's no rattles, no shakes. Uh, I can hit, I can go off the edge of the road here, which is kind of rough. And you really don't hear anything rattling on one of these things here. I'm pretty impressed how this held up over the last, uh, you know, 13, 14 years. With all these vehicles, even with the blowing motors, are going for $2,000 because people realize this is kind of a hidden gem in the past. That if you can fix up and keep going, it's just as good as buying a $30,000 car these days. So who wants to spend $30,000 when you can have something that's uh, 10 years old and does the same thing as practical, good gas mileage, and even safety safety is probably one of the biggest key of this vehicle that people buy it for and as we come to kind of a stop here we'll make a turn here we're going to see how the uh, turning radius is here and i think the turning radius is just fine i mean it's hell yeah no problem there we can turn around there someone left a mcdonald big mac empty box in the middle of the road and uh as we get back out in the highway hear the tires kind of spinning that all wheel symmetrical drive kicking in so uh, we'll go back here and we'll kind of wrap this video up. We'll talk about the engine real quick. All right, as we kind of pull up here and park, and we take a look at the inside one more time. I'll throw up some pictures real quick. And a lot of the things I had to do this thing when I got it was mainly the engine. Now the interior, the interior, I give it pretty much a a good solid A, only because you know it doesn't have they don't have any tears in the seats. There's no holes in the body or anything. Now the engine. Pretty much got to give it a DD minus because they had some problems. They didn't have the right oil screen uh, dip uh, the sump down in front of the oil pan enough. They put eventually put baffles in a lot of these oil pans in the bottom. And here are just some of the pictures as I kind of ramble on here. Uh, some of the things I had to do. I had to replace the bearings uh, for a second time. And some of these uh, cheaper bearings you got to watch. And the oil pump I replaced. So the engine I probably have about four hundred some dollars in the engine, but still well worth it. Paid three hundred dollars for the car. And you figure state taxes and all that, you know, another $100. So I think I got a pretty good deal in the vehicle. There's a lot of videos on my channel. I'll put a link right about there uh, for all the Subaru stuff I did to the Forester. Uh, well, the stuff I did do the Subaru and the Forester, that's the only, this is typically the only Forester or Subaru I've ever owned in my life. So it was kind of quite a learning experience while reading up and, and watching other YouTubers do their thing. Probably will keep it through the winter months. But other than that, uh, original windshield, I never has streaked or anything. We do have all these little uh, holes here. I'm not really sure what that was for. A lot of vehicles have this. Now, I did say something earlier about this was a telescoping uh, steering wheel. And not uh, telescoping wheel steering wheel comes forward and back, comes up like this. This actually is a tilt. It's just their version of it uh, where you can go like this. Some vehicles have a handle here. You pull back and it will tilt. But this one here just has this little thing here and you push up and you kind of lock it there so just to clarify that that way you'll watch the end of the video all the way through and you'll say hey i messed up and i'll type back and say hey no you didn't watch the end of the video <laughs> And one other quick thing here, we do have some controls on the steering wheel. We have our mode for our radio. We can go accelerate, coast, uh, cruise control. I've never really tested the cruise control. I think the cruise control does work, if I remember right. And we can turn the volume up and down on the radio. As you can see there, there it goes. You can mute it. There you hit the other button, the volume goes up and all that. And it's kind of nice to have that. You don't have to take your eyes off of the radio. So safety, like I said, Subaru really tried to change the game they tried to get into the the really safety part of vehicles because that's what people nowadays care about and something this old believe it or not has a lot of safety features with airbags everywhere we got an airbag here i don't know if we have an airbag on this side i don't think we, yes we do we have right one right up there boy it's hard to see i guess it would probably be up here and as for side airbags if i unhook my seat belt here real quick while i'm just kind of rambling on let's see if this has a side airbag for the seat and it does. Well, looky there. I'll be daggone. So it's just like my Trailblazer has a side airbag there. And for the passenger side and the back side here, I don't think we have anything back here. So there you go, guys. There's a nice look at it. Uh, this video was kind of long, but some of you will appreciate it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And hey, let me know where you're watching from right now. 
I think I'm going to coin that. And uh, I did put some cheap floor mats in it. I don't have the original ones for the back. I do have the two for the front. They're in good shape, so I may just scrub them, clean them up, and put them in there. I tried to make something a little uh, cleaner just temporarily just to kind of get me by. And you can see I've got this thing here. Uh, this Supru has these little tabs right here because I guess a lot of ladies, older ladies, older guys, maybe even me, that's me nowadays, uh, these mats were getting up under the brake pedal and they couldn't stop the vehicle, so they actually put little tabs in these here to keep them from sliding up. And right there is a little handle for the fuel uh, door. The little thing's missing, but... You know, I'll deal with that later, but it needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But uh, there you go, guys. I'm really uh, pretty happy with this little thing. I was almost that close to taking it to the junkyard. There we go, guys. So I'm going to kind of end the video here. So thanks for watching. If you have a Supra, tell me if you like it and what you like about it. And would you buy one of these and restore the engine and get it back on the road if the body looked as good as this and the interior looked that good? If it does... Let me know in the comments section and let's chat about it. So until my next video, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.